Inside starts with its title card, as most games would, but there's no menu. Instinctively, you'll press a button and your character will enter the stage. You have control instantly and will start running through the woods as men and dogs chase after you. As you sprint, jump, and climb your way to safety, you notice that these men in masks are escorting people into vans. It's likely you're going to be one of them, but you've escaped. It's clear that there's something sinister taking place. You encounter a pig who's trying to attack you, but find that it's being controlled by some parasitic creature. You'll find them quite a few times in the game, and it seems they're the reason for your next discovery. As you continue to venture onwards, you find a mind control device that helps you solve a puzzle. My guess is that the people who were captured were being infected by the parasites, allowing them to now be susceptible to these mind controlling devices. It's unnerving watching them stumble around as you force them to help you, but are they even alive? Most of the game takes place in industrial areas that feel eerie and isolated. They're often run down and the environment itself becomes a threat. There's an odd comfort to seeing the mindless people because they are only real companions, other than one, who I can't talk about without spoiling part of the game. The mindless are being used on a mass scale to fulfill tasks that regular people don't want to do, or as you'll find later, tasks that they can't do. The mindless are an experiment and it appears the end goal is for them to be able to repair the now underwater city. As you'll find later in the game, it's actually possible for them to be modified in certain ways. To make sure their functioning is intended, there are tests that rely on following a rhythm. Their organized march echoes through the Ray City as you traverse the rooftops in an attempt to escape it. The decaying environment causes you to fall. You're now bunched in with them. Parents are even taking their children to watch the mindless perform almost as if to expose them to the idea of human enslavement at an early age, desensitizing them to the cruel world they've created. There's no dialogue, so you'll be piecing this story together through what's on your screen, in addition to things like music, audio cues, and ambience. Visually, this game is stellar. The use of the grey, desaturated colour palette helps the world feel dark, gloomy, and depressing. The atmosphere feels heavy, with a fog being almost ever-present, and light is used sparingly causing it to often have a heightened significance when on screen. This is used frequently to point the player towards where they're supposed to go or look. Your only defining feature is a bright red top, marking you as a target, marking you for death, and separating you from the background. You have no face, no one here does. This may be a thematic choice as well as an aesthetic one, but I believe this is a visual motif to help express the game's themes of individuality and identity. This game also has themes of free will and control, which are explored through the literal mind control featured in the game, but also the control the player has over their character. The evil corporation also demonstrates control over the player, which becomes increasingly apparent towards the end of the game. Each puzzle forces you to analyze your environment, which is packed with details that inform you on the story and experiments taking place within it. The puzzle progression is also executed brilliantly. When new mechanics are introduced, they'll often first be hinted at in some way during an earlier part in the level, so you gain some familiarity with it. There's no fighting in this game, not really. You'll run, jump, and hide from just about everything. I've never experienced a game that gives me the sheer amount of panic that Inside has. The game makes sure that every escape you have is a close call. The narrative is filled with twists that will have you questioning the game's themes, and I cannot describe in words the pure feeling of dread when I beat the game for the first time. If you're searching for an immersive horror with beautiful visuals, incredible sound design, and unique puzzles, then I encourage you to give this game a try for yourself. If you've played the game already, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it down below, and if there's a game that you love and want me to look into, you can leave that down there too. Thanks for watching.